It is my absolute pleasure. Let's welcome to stage our first guest. He is an actor whose credits include Everybody Hates Chris, Final Fantasy 13, and Batman Under the Red Hood. Today, he joins us to discuss the role of Phineas Lynn. Please welcome Vincent Martel! Hey everyone. Now it's now it's way too quiet. Okay, cool. <laughs> and next he's an actor whose body of work includes Ridley Jones, The Witcher, Nightmare of the Wolf, and Sissy the Young Empress. Today he joins us to discuss the role of Ferb Fletcher. Please welcome David Arrigo Jr. Hello, hello. I'll be I'll be right back. Okay, yeah, we gotta we we'll spare it back there. Oh, good, good. Then we can talk about uh, uh, your... Him? We can talk about Jason Todd. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I played Jason Todd in, in two different Batman movies. It was really, really cool. It was a lot of fun. Oh, absolutely. And um, I, I was genuinely impressed that they, they had the temerity to go ahead and do Death in the Family. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, reading the script, I was like, this is going to be really intense and probably um, very violent. And then I saw the animation when I was doing ADR, uh, and it was far more um, exciting and violent than I thought it was going to be. It was a lot of fun. Absolutely. I was, uh, I was hoping, I was almost hoping that maybe like in the original comic where there was a vote on the end, I was like, wouldn't it be cool if they had an Easter, Easter egg where it's like, if he lived? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, what was nice about when we did Death in the Family is it was like, uh, you know, in, instead of the call-in feature, we were doing like choose your own adventure. And so it kind of gave the same feel of how everyone chose what happened to Jason Todd. You could kind of choose what direction all the characters went. And um, that gave us the ability to like play around with not just um, Robin, but like Red Robin and Red Hood and Robin Hush. And there was just all these different versions of, um, of the character that we were able to explore because of that. And it was really cool. Very nice. Very nice. And oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> That's really great. <laughs> I didn't know what he was doing. I didn't know what bit he was doing. I was like, he's doing a bit, but I didn't know yeah, what it was. I could not help myself. That's great. I was out shopping for clothes the other day. You know that. Yeah, like, I, I know. Whenever he goes shopping, I know about it. Yeah, we talk all yeah. the time about my wardrobe and how it needs to be improved. That's no. awesome. <laughs> Good for you. This is at H&M, man. H&M? Yeah. All right, well, they owe me some money. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I should get a cut of that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Also, thank you. Thank you for letting me borrow this. It's oh, amazing. I stole the wig. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Who, 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 who loaned it? The, the Does Phineas that loaner? Wig? Yeah. Come on up. Come on. Yeah, thank come you. Up, come, up, come up here. Come up here. Come up here. I gotta, gotta, get, gotta get a reward here. Here. <laughs> and here. Thank you there so you much. There you go. Cheers. <laughs> Incredible. I just wanted to see the look on his face. I know. Really. I didn't know what the thing was. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, for uh, the audience that know, I'd love to start this off with, uh, where did Phineas and Ferb begin for each of you? And Yeah. You um, I started working on Phineas and Ferb uh, in the ye old days, uh, <laughs> in the year 2006. Um, and I was 13, and I worked, uh, I worked the pilot behind Disney World because behind Hollywood Studios, there are actual studios. And I grew up in Florida, and so I recorded the pilot from Disney World, and then two years later... We, at the Roy? We, we, at, yeah, yeah, that's exactly where, yeah, it was Ideas at the time, was what the, the yeah, was what the studio was called. Um, I don't think it's there anymore, but... Um, that's where it started for me, and then it's been a crazy journey ever since. Where, you know, it's it's been a big part of my life for now 17 years, and you know, I'm I'm doing more episodes of the show right now, and it's crazy because yeah, you always hope that you do something that that 
people like, but you never think you're going to get to work on something this long. So it's, it's really wonderful. The gig that keeps gigging. I yeah. know. I hope it gigs forever. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll do it forever. If yeah. I can. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I got to, I got to start with the show in, uh, 2017. Um, they, they were doing a crossover for Milo Murphy's law. And, um, as it turns out, I can sound quite a bit like Fub. And they needed someone to do okay. that. Uh, so the audition went out. I, I got to do it. And I like to say, like, I am the luckiest Phineas and Ferb fan in the world because I got to join in. And I got to join in and get to know all of the wonderful people who are involved. Like, we actually do legitimately hang out in Los Angeles. And, like, getting to know Dan and Swampy and them. Or did, everybody is just so stinking lovely and welcoming. And, like, the fandom has been so wonderfully welcoming, which is nice because, as, as a lot of you fans know, there is literally a song in the show you're not Ferb. <laughs> and uh, before, before it came out, there were a couple of people online like, not my Ferb, and they would link the video, and I was like, uh-oh, this is going to get ugly. <laughs> and then doing it, honestly, everyone has been so welcoming. So like all those people just like shed away. And that's just that's just the nature of the beast of fandom. And uh, mm -hmm. they will they will uh, have concerns leading into something, and then all of a sudden it all evaporates once so once it once you're entrenched. Yeah, yeah. I, I've got a project coming up, um, and I'm doing a couple of roles that have existed before, and um, the the actors who have played them in the past have since passed. So hopefully I won't get too much on that one. I'll be sending him so much hate mail. <laughs> <laughs> As I do any time he books something. <laughs> yeah. What's, uh, what's been the best memory you've taken from uh, being part of Phineas and Ferb? Hmm. I just, uh, that, that's a good question, but it, it's like the, the pile just keeps getting bigger. Yeah, I know. Um, and I, I feel so, again, just so fortunate to like come and do these things and make, make memories and um, hang out and have fun with Vince. And like sometimes Olivia travels with us too. And I'm digging that. Yeah. No, for me, I, you know, there's specific things that have happened in my life because I'm working on Phineas and Ferb that would never happen working on anything else. And one of those for me um, is there were walk around characters at the theme park. So you could go to Disney World, or you could go to Disneyland, and there's a Phineas and Ferb who have like a dance party and they're in the parade. And, you know, odds are I'll never work on something again that you get that. Like, that is such a very specific thing that pretty much no TV cartoon on Disney gets. Mm. And only some of the movies get that. So having that was really, really surreal as, like, there was, you know, a meet-and-greet section in Hollywood Studios in Florida specifically dedicated to Phineas and Ferb. And something like that, I will really, yeah, I'll cherish that for the rest of my life because that, that is so rare to work on a project where you get to have that. So that, that one blows my mind to this day. Did you ever hear about the Phineas and Ferb pin trader character that they were developing? A pin trader character? Yes. No. Yeah. I have it, the pins. Like, I have a bunch of the pins, but not, not. They are, Tell they, me they more. Were, they were going to, um, I, I was an equity actor at, uh, at, at Disney World. Yeah, okay. So I did, the, I opened the Monsters and Laugh Floor show. Oh, so, awesome. Okay. Um, but yeah, they, would ha they were I was called on in, and like this was when the series was red hot, and the show characters we're do a we're do themed pin characters. We're literally they're just gonna have just the pins of just a certain franchise or whatever, and mm -hmm. they had me kind of run around, and I, I tested it uh, one afternoon, and then they never they never did it. As it usual. didn't test well. <laughs> no, 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 it, no, it did as a test well. It was just like somewhere no, along. It was see, like, they didn't the budget. So was it you with just the pins? I was on? yeah, I was gonna have this big bandolier of the of just Phineas and Verb pins, and just go around, and the idea was I'd do a set. And oh. I would be the world's biggest Phineas and Ferb fan. Be Got like, oh, you. Hey, I, 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 I mean, the thing you. is, you, you were just too good at it, and they yeah. knew they couldn't have you all the time, and that no one else could live up yeah. to it. No, it, yeah. it, the uh, op operations shut it down. Gotcha. Yes. You, you <laughs> it was one of those, people. No, we need that area clear, we need that area clear for uh, meet and greet. Well, maybe in the next couple of years, they'll try to revive it. You know? well, I wasn't sure if you guys had heard about that. That was going to be... No, I'd yeah, never heard that before. That's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. yeah. I do love some pins, though. You guys I like do. the pins? Yeah, I like the Phineas and Ferb pins. I definitely yeah. try to collect all those ones, yeah. So, there you have it, all this stuff. Um, 
Before I jump into our audience, uh, I always like asking this one. What's uh, in any production you guys have done, uh, what's been the craziest moment you've ever had in the recording booth? That you feel comfortable sharing. <laughs> oh. Let me think. All right, while well, he's thinking, uh, mine's easy because it was from Phineas and Ferb. Um, it was early on in Phineas and Ferb, like probably like the third or fourth episode, and Phineas had to sound like he was underwater, and I. I didn't know how to do that. And so I was trying to do it, and I was like 13 or 14. And so um, one of our creators, uh, Swampy, was voice directing the episode, and he was like, Vincent, it's just, it's not sounding like you're underwater. You know what, you know what the really good voice actors do? Is they put a bunch of water in their mouths and they try to do it with the water in their mouth. And so I was like choking on water and like spilling water all over myself. And they were all just laughing at me. But I was, I didn't know them well enough to know that, you know, they would want to like waterboard me. Um, <laughs> It takes me like five or six hangouts with someone before I'm like, I think they want to waterboard me. Um, we're getting close, man. Yeah, we're getting there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that was the, probably the craziest one because yeah, I was I was soaking wet and, and coughing and embarrassed, but yeah, it was fun. So crazy. The, the thing that comes into my mind is like the worst session I ever had. Oh. Um, and it was something where just the director and I we did not see eye to eye. We like our artistic it's sensibilities. Really tall. Was, Stupid. It was a stupid joke. That was a short joke, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Um, it was really eye to belly button. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no. Uh, I'm with you. Just our, yeah. our artistic sensibilities were, were very different, and it was a, for this dubbing project that I was brought in on, and they had cast me just like auto cast um, from from the casting director for the company. So they bring me in. We're doing the thing, and it is immediately apparent that the the director seems to think that this is my first rodeo. Like, I've never done this before. I'm getting line reads for everything. I'm getting, like, usually I'm, like, a one to two take person when I'm doing dubbing. And we were taking seven, eight, nine takes on everything. And dubbing pays out, like, hourly. Yeah. So we're doing it. And we get to this point where, like, the note that comes at me is, you're going to have to learn how to take my notes and act. <laughs> and I'm Whoa. Like, Okay. <laughs> and like I am a I am an upbeat person in in the booth. I am really cheerful. I have the most fun. So if you get me to the point where I'm going Okay. Yep. Sure. It is not a good day. Like I almost walked out of my own booth at home and said, "Keep the money." Um, but that's that's probably the most crazy <laughs> session that no, I've ever that had. No, that would be. And for the context and audience, a line reading is where the director says, "No, say it exactly like this." No, 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 no. Mm -mm. A line reading is where the director says, "Say it exactly like this." Do it again. <laughs> A line reading <laughs> where the director says, say it exactly like this. There you go. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. We'll take that one. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll do it again. We'll uh, we'll I, 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 I can we'll do it again. Yeah. You're, You're a good, good sport. <laughs> <laughs> and it's kind of, uh, you know, maybe some actors will be like, okay, can you give me a line reading in this other way too, whatever. It's, it's, it's a final resort because you hired somebody and you want to hear their interpretations and stuff like that. So. And I don't mind a line reading. Yeah. Like, honestly, if you're giving me direction and I'm not getting it. Give me a line reading. If you if you know the way to do it, let's do it. But when you're starting me there, mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's a. Uh, it's just not how it's usually done in a preferred environment. Yeah. So and and, and I've I've been there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, on a Disney thing, I was I was uh, doing uh, scratch tracks for a. Um, a gold robot that may be associated with a, a, a space franchise. Oh, I heard oh yeah. It. And um, the line was, Goldie. the Ewoks worship me as a god. And I was like, are you sure you want me to say god? Because in the movie it says deity. And then I was like, then there's like the uncomfortable silence. I'm like, oh, I just stepped in it, didn't I? I like, yeah. mm. Go ahead and say deity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that, that kind of thing, that pays dividends with the fandom, I think. Because they would know. Why not fix it? 
Exactly, but it's that it's that yeah that uncomfortable thing of mm. it's like I'm not trying to rest up my bounds. I'm just trying to <laughs> avoid the iceberg. Um, oh, uh, and on that subject, uh, it usually comes up anyway. So let's get it out of the way. Um, any uh, quick advice you would give for anyone who wants to pursue voice acting? And it's okay to say, don't be a voice actor, be an actor. No, uh, no, no, no. Uh, we both love what we do. Uh, the answer we give literally everybody is uh, D. Bradley Baker, one of the best voice actors ever. He's amazing. He plays Perry the Platypus on our show. And um, he has a website called I want to be a voice actor.com. I did a, a clinic with him one time, and he was in the front, and he was like, all right, so I have a, a website. It's I want to be a voice actor.com. And if you can't remember that, no, you don't. Yeah. I was like, it's that a great is... website, though, because he is like the guy um, yes. who is, you know, we all look up to. And he runs the website. So if you have any interest, you know, he has everything there for you. Yeah. If you, if you check out um, a pinned tweet that I have on my Twitter, it's the first tweet on my thing. I have uh, a chunk of resources that I really suggest. It's got I want to be a voice actor.com, um, Rob Paulson's Talk and Tunes podcast, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, it's not available on iTunes iTunes, but it is available on Spotify, and you don't have to pay for Spotify to get it. I, I adore Rob. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's really great. Um, VO Buzz Weekly with Chuck Duran and Stacey J. Aswad. That's pretty good. And then um, Yuri Lowenthal, aka Spider Man, and Tara Platt, his wife. They wrote a book, and I like that so much. I'm actually a testimonial in the second edition. So. Whoa. Testimonial. Yeah. That's cool. And I gave it to him for free, brah. Wow, that's cool. <laughs> well, gentlemen, thank you for indulging my capricious curiosity. I'm going to invite our audience to capricious. come up with a question. Capricious, good word. Oh, Ooh, thank you, thank you. questions thank from you. the audience. <laughs> They better be good. Seriously, uh, they better be good. <laughs> whoever, whoever goes first gets two pieces of candy. <laughs> Ooh, piece of candy. Ooh, that is exactly candy. what I was thinking, piece too. Hey, yeah. what's your name? That's exactly Hi. Right. Hi. You already met me. I'm Carmen. Good what to see you again. doing? Well, not much. Just answering questions <laughs> from the fans. <laughs> um, so I wanted to know for each of you, if you had to pick one of the adventures that Phineas and Ferb went on in any of the shows for your childhood self to have gone on, like, what would have been your childhood dream Phineas and Ferb project? <sighs> All right, yeah, I think, I think I'm gonna go with this. The treehouse fight, because I was a major Power Rangers fan as a kid, and that would have filled my Megazord dreams. Yeah, I, I usually tell people that getting uh, a famous band back together for my parents, that would be cool. <laughs> Love getting a band back together. Nice. Great one to start us off with. Thank you. Get Steve Perry back into Journey or something. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, what's your name? Hi, my name is Cora, and this one's for Vincent. Yeah. And I was wondering uh, what, like, the process of... Yeah, get out of here. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. Um, <laughs> it's fine. But for, like, for doing the songs of Phineas and Ferb for yeah. the show and the movie, like, what's the process of doing them? Because I've, like, listened to them a thousand times, and, like, there's so many of them. Yeah, stuff. no, our writers are amazing. So basically, uh, depending on what song it is, different writers on the show would write the music together. They would send it to our music supervisor and producer, Danny Jacob, who is incredible and has played music with, you know, tons of really famous musicians. He's been their guitarist and many other instruments that he plays. They go, hey, we want, this is the song we wrote with these lyrics. We want it to sound like this genre. And so they'd be like, we want this to sound like disco, or we want this to sound like rock and roll. And he'll send back a demo that's almost always exactly what they asked for. He's incredible. And then they send it to me. I try my best to learn it, usually like in under a week that they give it to me. Yeah. And then I come in, and uh, they... Uh, work with me until I can make it sound good. And it's, yeah, it's always fun because I, I'll usually do like, you know, my first pass at it and I'll be super confident. I'll be like, oh my God, I've been singing this song for a week straight. It's going to sound so good. And I'll, I'll finish it. And they're like, well, that was, that was good for a first take. What if we, what if you, what if you did it again? And I'm like, okay. They're like, yeah, you were very flat. Um, and so that'll make you feel good. Yeah, no, it's it's one of those things where it's like I I'm a very experienced singer because of work and just out of like enjoyment. But I'm not a professional musician, and I never feel it more than when I work with the professional musicians at Disney Studios. Like they are incredible. Yeah. So yeah, and then I go in there and I and I uh, I do my best, and then they they bring it to the show. Yeah, of course. Thank you for the question. 
Hi, what's your name? My name is Lauren, and if you want to know, I am wearing the Summer All the Time collection. Awesome. Ah, it was it was pretty that. popular for like three minutes. But yeah. It's okay. Nice. <laughs> so uh, I actually have a I have more of a clinical question for okay. Vincent. I know, I know. Okay. It's how many times have you performed brain surgery? Yeah, a lot. No, it's it's actually about uh, your puberty. Okay. Um, sorry. Now, now this is getting a little personal. Yeah, sorry, yeah. sorry. Um, When's as, it gonna happen? As we all know, yeah, know. Um, you came on the show. You were 13 years old, and your voice sounded drastically different in the pilot than how it did as it went on. Um, was that the development of your voice as you matured? Was that something that you were coached on by Dan and Swampy? Was that something that you did? Like, how was that? Yeah, it was a combination of things. So, you know, I, obviously I was going through puberty at the time and my voice was changing. However, even where I had it probably by like season two is where it kind of like plateaus and ends up being about the same as the rest of the show. That's not just my voice was changing and I had to try my best to keep in the spirit of the character, but this kind of happens in a, in a lot of shows that end up Every being, show. I was about to say, a lot of shows that end up being on for a long time, if you listen to the first season, they sound a lot different than they end up finally sounding. And one of the reasons too is you find where you can do everything for the character. You find something comfortable where you're like, okay, I can yell, I can whisper, I can sing. Um, I can do everything I need to do in my register and still keep the the attitude and the and the spirit of the character. So it was a combination of both of those things, where it was like I have to, you know, maintain this childlike voice, but then I also want it to be something where I can really use all the tools in my register mm. that I'm going to need to play the character. And so you you will definitely notice that even if you watch, you know, The Simpsons or Family Guy. Or, oh yeah, yeah. Those Man, first uh, seasons. Homer those, sounds like Walter Matthau because that's what he was doing. Yeah. So they, they don't. Yeah, and it. it, it it just ends up being where you get comfortable and you can really sit somewhere. So that's, yeah, that's actually a combination of those two things. And it's this interesting thing in, in the contemporary day and age, right? Like that didn't register for people as readily back when things were just on TV, when they were not available on DVD, right? Because there's a subtle change that's happening throughout as people settle. But now you can own that thing the next day. And, so, and people watch things on repeat. So then that next season, they're like, oh, I'm going to watch the first season again. Which you didn't have that option before. Yeah, and it's, and so you can that notice reference it, yeah. was not... Yeah. It's, it's, it's an interesting time. It is. What a time. What a time to be alive right now. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Great question. What? Hey. Yeah, you're welcome. Hey. Whoa. He's the candy. Woo. He's the candy. Oh, cool. Hey, what's no, your name? Absolutely. My name's Maya. What do you want to know? So Phineas and Ferb had a, a lot of crossovers on the show, like with Marvel and Star Wars and all that. And I was just curious, what crossover would you potentially want them to have? Um, I thought about this at a different con, and my answer is super selfish. Um, I did this show called Ridley Jones, where I played a dodo bird called Dudley. And um, it's basically an Edwin without the lisp. But um, I loved playing him so much, and the show ended a while ago. So I want those two universes to cross over so that I can play Dudley again. <laughs> yeah, I, I, um, I would love it if we could do Lord of the Rings. That would be really cool if we could do like three hour long specials that were the Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Stay tuned. <laughs> Hi, what's your name? Uh, I'm Mary. Um, I was just wondering, if you guys could be any other profession other than a voice actor, what would you be interested in doing? Oh. I always thought I wanted to be like a history teacher when I was in school. No I liked history a lot, but I'd, I, I wouldn't want to be a teacher. Like, I know that about myself now. But that was something I, I, I always thought of, where I was yeah. like, if I wasn't doing this, I'd, I'd love to learn, like, be really learned. Do, do I have to use my current skill set, or can I magically access the skill set that's appropriate for the. Whatever no. you want. You could dunk in this scenario. <laughs> you could play for, like, the 76ers. Well, I, I, I was a graphic designer and photographer for a theater company company for a little while, um, and I grew up drawing a lot, um, but never never really became proficient enough to make a living at it. I think I would probably want to be either an animator or a comic book artist. Yeah. Oh, there you go. If Can I, I magically have access to those skills, please? <laughs> I, I would like someone to magically give me those skills. <laughs> hey, what's your name? Hi, I'm Abby Rose. Um, I just have a question um, about... Hold on. 
What is your favorite Phineas and Ferb episode or creation? Hmm. I am part Christmas elf, I think, on my mother's side. And um, so I love the Christmas episode where they make Santa the spa that Buford keeps going, nah, that's a clubhouse. I'm like, nah, okay. And, and of course, that's what Santa basically calls it at the end. So, Yeah, I think my favorite episode, um, it, it changes, but I really like Summer Belongs to You, where we go around the world in a day. And I also really like the Star Wars crossover because I'm a big Star Wars fan, so that that's up there for me for sure. Yeah, yeah. Seeing our characters with like the Star Wars art and the Star Wars costume is really cool. Yeah, I wish they made like toys of them. And I I adore that one for the like Lion King one and a half of it all. Um, yeah, how it's all happening at the same time, like yeah. at the same time, but not in the same place. Yeah. Hey, what's your name? Uh, my name is Devin, and um. What do you guys imagine or like picture for the voice of the characters you're being casted? It, it changes for every every role um, based on you know they give us a you know a breakdown of who the character is and what they're like. And what's really helpful is when they give you the art. They don't always do that. Mm. But the art I feel like is so important to know what the character looks like, so you know how you think that they should sound. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, when when you have great writing. It's, it's almost like there's, there's some magic hallway in your brain, right? And the great writing is a skeleton key that will open any number of doors. Or it's a very specific key that will take you to one door and suddenly you're in that room and you know exactly what your version of that character has to be. And I mean, the real secret is when the writing is very, very good, the actors don't have to be. Did you just call me a bad actor? <laughs> like right here on stage in front of all these people, you just call me a bad actor? Uh, so, next question. Um, <laughs> have you, but do you feel that way? Like, I feel like no. when the, no. No, I feel like I'm real good. <laughs> no, no. no, I know what he's saying. I'm just, when, I'm just when the writing is so jerk. good, the actors don't actually have to be that good. They just have to serve the writing. Yeah. And that is our job usually in general as actors of any kind is just to make the director happy is to give give them what they want. Um, we're just there to, to fulfill that, to fill like their image. Yeah, we're, the, we're problem solvers. That's what they say. Hey, what's your name? Um, hi, my name's Josie. So my question is, if you got to hang out with one character from Phineas and Ferb that you did not voice in real life, who would you choose? I have a question for you first. Are you a gender-bent Kaiba? No, I'm Blake from Ruby. Okay, thank you. Yes, that was my second guess. <laughs> yeah. um, thank you. A character that we don't voice that we'd like to hang out with? Yes. Yeah. Um... Vanessa, baby. Oh, whoa. Uh, that's funny. Um, I think, I think maybe Dr. Dubenschmerz. I think that'd be fun. Yeah. Get up to no good. Yeah, that like, cause then you know you're getting a twofer. Yeah. Perry will Perry be would show up at some point. <laughs> He'd like kick me in the jaw, but. Um. Yeah, I think. Uh, no, nah, I'm gonna stick with Vanessa. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, what's your name? Uh, hi, my name is Aiden, and this is kind of a specific question, but recently I saw a video of, from Dan Palmemeyer about how he made some of the voice actors do an impression of Doofenshmirtz as their character. Yeah. But we didn't we didn't hear Ferb, so can you, you do Ferb? That's a request. I can, I can do it. Too. I, I don't mind. Okay. Um, it, it's an interesting balance, right? Because what do you want to do? Do you want to do, curse you, Perry the platypus? <laughs> or do you want to like lean into like, curse you, Perry the platypus? Like, what are you trying to do? Or, or are you going, curse you, Perry the platypus? Like, what are? How do you do it? Those are sort of like the smattering of things that I I sent to them. Well, yeah. When he asked us to do that too, like we got a request to send those to the writing team, I was like in line boarding an airplane. <laughs> and I was like, and I, I was like, you want me to yell like Dr. Duvenschmerz lines about like enslaving the human race? Cause I'm pretty sure that like the FAA is not gonna be down with that. But 
Yeah, yeah we, we both re recorded those in like airports. <laughs> yeah. Actually, you know what? If you come by the booth, um, I think I probably still have the audio file that I sent. I'll, I'll play it for you. Yeah, because I don't think yours was in the, in the video, right? No, it wasn't no, in the video. It's okay. I liked it. Hi, what's your name? <laughs> my name is Kenny. Hi, Kenny. Hey. And my question is, what was it like voicing the characters in Across the Second Dimension? Um, I mean, that was, you know, that was our first uh, film, and so that was really exciting because it was the longest format that we had done so far. But my favorite part about that was, I mean, it's kind of messed up, but Phineas is always happy. He's never <laughs> upset. And in that episode, he's, there's a couple versions of upset Phineas. There's like the, you know, the alternate dimension Phineas who has like no emotion at all. But then there's Phineas being really mad at Perry for like lying about being a secret agent. And so that was just interesting for me as an actor and just fun to not do the normal thing. And so that was cool. And um, I really like that movie. I think it turned out really, really well, and um, Avengers stole our ending. Yeah. Um, we came out first, Avengers came out a year later, and they stole our entire ending. Um, but it was really, it was really cool. I think it turned out really well. I, I, I mean, they, they didn't pay me for it, so, because it wasn't me. Yeah. <laughs> Did, did, I, I, when you did come on board, though, was there uh, an extended version of that really that really stuck with you? It's like, oh wow, yeah, you know? the film, uh, doing the film, yeah, doing um, Candace Against the Universe Candace was yeah. a blast. Like, yeah. and they gave Ferb a lot of lines. I was yeah, like, you no. had a lot of lines. I get to talk. Too many. <laughs> <laughs> Those I'm, are my lines. I'm coming for your job. I want my lines. <laughs> I still say he's, um, just wanted to say that you're so firm in my book. Oh, that's <laughs> wonderful. You. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. Great question. Thank you. But there's a great cosplay, by the way. Uh, you're with him, right? All right, all right. We got any, got any oh Bob's Burgers fans? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? Um, Lydia Caslow. Out of all of the inventions that Phineas and Ferb made, which is your least favorite? Least favorite? Hmm. Mm. Yeah, that's tough. Um, maybe the Finadroids and Furbots. Like, they're very cool, but... They're on the creepy side. Like, if you think of this army of automatons, <laughs> you're like, uh-oh. I mean, I think about it every day. Yeah, yeah I think about it actually all the time right now. Um, AI. Uh, <laughs> it's coming. Uh, but, yeah, no. Um, my least favorite. Um, I really can't think of a least favorite for me. I, I really... I. I think it was funny where we did the, the platypus toy that didn't do anything, <laughs> but I think I'd still buy it. That's what's messed up. It's like, I think I'd still want to own it. I wish there was a toy version of that. So I don't think I have any like that I really dislike. Sorry. What's your least yeah, favorite? Yeah, what's your least favorite? Um, probably the weird Perry robot thing that they made. The giant one that yeah. like launches them or whatever? That like yeah, flings us? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, there you go. Thank you, great one. Great question. Hey, what's your name? My name's Serena. What do you want to know, Serena? Uh, so I wanted to ask, uh, how did you guys start off uh, voice acting? Like, where did you begin? i uh, just curious. You know. um, I grew up doing theater and um, wound up moving to New York to try and make it on Broadway and do all those auditions and everything. And while I was there, I had a manager who got me a meeting with an on-camera commercial agent. And I had done a production of Avenue Q prior. And so I was talking to this uh, on-camera commercial agent about that and about, you know, the different characters I did. Because I was like, oh, I, I played Nikki uh, and Trucky. And a bad idea there. Um, and I was telling him that story. And I was uh, talking about this little bracelet that I had that reminded me that I could do things that scared me. Because I, I had never puppeteered before the show. And then when the reviews were coming out, they singled me out as the best puppeteer. And I was like, oh, that's cool. I worked hard and earned that. Um, and then I'm telling him this story, and he goes, okay. Takes me by the shoulders, kind of like walks me across the office, sits me, in down, sits me down in front of another guy named Matt, and he goes, you two, talk. And Matt was a voiceover agent. And so they started letting me submit on things, and I was like, wait a minute. 
You're gonna let me do this without a Broadway credit? You're gonna let me do this without me being a celebrity? Okay. Um, and so then I wound up having an audition for an on-camera feature um, called Richard the Stork about a sparrow who thought he was a stork. And um, I woke up smiling. I rode the subway grinning. I did the audition beaming. And I left glowing like Eddie Murphy in The Golden Child. And um, I literally got on the phone with my dad that day, uh, uh, like 22nd and 4th. And I went, I think I found the thing I'm supposed to be doing. And then I just shifted all of my effort into this. Yeah, I, I, I was um, I was on a sitcom at the time when I was a teenager, and they just started uh, asking me if I was interested in doing cartoons, and I was interested in doing voiceover, and um, I was fortunate enough to to be able to start working in voiceover pretty fast, like within the first you know couple of years of me acting at all, and um, I got super fortunate that I ended up working because I, I I did a Disney pilot before Phineas and Ferb called Can You Dig It? And it was uh, by the creators of the show Recess. I don't know if you remember that show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like a 1970s cartoon. Um, uh, no, no, sorry. The, the Can show, You Dig It? Yeah, the show that I was working on was a 1970s. Like set in the 70s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it was actually with Ashley Tisdale. Um, the day that Sweet Life of Zack and Cody was premiering. <laughs> she was telling all of us we had to watch the, the new show. She's like, oh my gosh, I, I'm on this new show. I'm so excited. And uh, then a couple years later, I did Phineas and Ferb. Uh, and that really you know, threw me into to voiceover. Yeah. There you go. Great questions, Rand. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Your answer is so much quicker than mine. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's your name? Uh, Delora. Um, I'm wondering, uh, which episode did you feel the worst for Candace? None of them. <laughs> Yeah, just mind your business. Yeah, it's not my fault. Out there snitching. What are you trying to do? Get uh, some stitches? Yeah, come on. You know what happens. Uh, no, I, I I, think the the one I, I ended up feeling, it's because it was, uh, I guess, about us. But no, uh, when she does actually get her way and the consequences of that, of like Phineas and Ferber going to boot camp and, you know, like them like losing their like imagination and everything. And um, that one I felt pretty bad because that was, you know, that's like the worst case scenario for like, oh, did she really get her way at all? You know, because now she doesn't have any adventure in her life either. So I that's pretty sad. Candace Against the Universe is probably it for me because like anybody thinking that the universe is against them, that's a terrible way to go through life. Like, nah, nah. <laughs> So, you know, if you, sometimes, it, like, if you take the, the sort of jokey nature of the show and you put that into a serious thing, like, oh, man, this poor girl really thinks that the universe is out to get her. Yeah. Thanks for the question. Thank Hi, what's your name? My name Totoro. is Megan. It, it's Totoro. Yeah. <laughs> um, and each of you have different experiences with this, so I'm really curious. Do you ever feel pigeonholed when going out for different roles, genres, or media forms, given your roles in such a recognizable show? I, I don't with Phineas and Ferb and with other voice uh, their voiceover work uh, as much as I noticed it with live action because like I used to be on a show called Everybody Hates Chris when I was a teenager and especially when you're you know like 17, 18 which is what I was doing when I was coming off the show in that case a lot of people like could only really see me like in person as a very like nerdy character from like the 80s and so <laughs> I was auditioning for a lot of stuff very similar to that and I was booking a lot of things that were very similar to that and so I, I find that happened to me more than it does because Phineas is so far away from my voice that I don't think anyone is going to necessarily associate my voice with that. And, I, and I've been lucky enough to do, like, a Batman or Robin is way different. Um, so I think it's easier kind of to disguise ourselves with our voices than it oh, is yeah. when someone's looking at my face on a TV screen for, like, four seasons. A hundred percent. Um... No, this show has absolutely not pigeonholed me. This show has opened doors. I was about to say, you have a, a good story about that. Yeah. How that just, you know, like, was a good introductory point to other Oh, artists. yeah. I mean, uh, I got the job in December of 2017, and it was, the, um, it was the first Western animation I'd gotten to do. I had done dubbing prior to that, things like that. But, like, pre-lay, as we call it, animation, where, where you lay down the vocal tracks, and then they animate to that, this was the first that I got to do and to be attached to a project like this 
was so helpful for me. Like uh, the next year, I want to say, or maybe a year and a half, um, I got this audition for a show called uh, Ridley Jones, the, the Dodo Bird thing. So I walk in, and as I'm walking in, the casting director goes, hey, Chris, Chris Nee, who created Doc McStuffins and Vampirina, Ridley Jones, obviously, and, and a couple of other things. Um, Hey, Chris, this is David. He's the new Phineas. I go, Ferb. She goes, Ferb. <laughs> okay. Um, and immediately, Chris Nee goes, Dan and Swampy, I love those guys. Hey, bring it in. That doesn't happen. Like, that does not happen out in yeah. the world. Immediately, her walls were down because someone she trusted already trusted Well, and that's me. the thing, too, is, is Dan and Swampy have been in, involved with so many great projects for so long that I think, have, like, it, them trusting either one of us and believing in us it says a lot to other people who admire them and have worked with them. Because, I mean, they worked yeah. on SpongeBob and The Simpsons and Family Guy, like, everything. Rocco's. So, yeah. Their stamp held some weight. And, yes. Um, this this was my like open the door kind of thing and uh as far as pigeonholing goes i get to do a wonderful variety of of things in my career and I, there is something coming that i wish i could tell you guys about keep your ears to the ground um it's climate it's catastrophe everybody oh. and it's coming for all of us <laughs> It's going to be a lot of fun, and I, I hope everyone enjoys it when, when it is finally out. Stay tuned. <laughs> Great question. Oh, oh, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Hi, what's your name? Hi, my name's Alicia. Um, so we know that Doofenshmirtz's inventions are often pretty quirky and end in a disaster, but I was wondering what oh, they Doofenshmirtz... end in a nator. Uh, yes, yeah. exactly. Um, what Doofenshmirtz invention do you feel like you could get the most use out of in real life? Uh, I'd, I'd really like to use the Hanseminator. Yeah. Get a bit of a better jawline. <laughs> yeah, I, I always love the, uh, the... There's like a giant vacuum. Mm. I could use that. I could <laughs> just vacuum up my apartment with like one, one roll. Really save me some time every week. Maybe the key findinator too. Sometimes I lose. Do you my lose keys your keys a lot? Yeah. Huh. I, I, have, I have three different sets. What? For, one for each bike. Oh, uh, well, okay. For, I'm sorry. Like, the first bike. They went to like your front door. Only, no, no, no. Oh. I just I, I misplaced them around my home. They're, gotcha. like, they're always in there, but under something. I, now you know something about him. <laughs> <laughs> He's an irresponsible adult. No, no. <laughs> hey, what's happened to the different bikes? Uh, my name is Khalid. I was wondering, uh, what is your favorite superhero from either Marvel or DC? Oh, my wallet's Ooh. in my other pants. It's Spider-Man. Yeah. Um, Cap gave him a really good run for his money in the Civil War arc um, in, the, in the books because I was like, this is a fascinating character. He is, you know, reputed as this this yes sir but his morality informed him through that whole thing and he went against um you know the the establishment and i was like ooh he's doing something interesting but it's always been Spider-Man for me. Yeah, it's Spider-Man for me as well. Spider-Man's so, so cool. Um, I like Batman a lot, too. Uh, you know, it, it just sucks that, like, if you get, like, a speeding ticket in Gotham, he'll, like, break your legs. <laughs> I always hate that. Do you do you know how fast you were going? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God, Batman, no. Go to Arkham. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you have it. Thank you. What's your, what's your favorite? Oh, uh... Spider-Man, of course. Yeah, yeah, see? He's awesome. <laughs> oh, well, Dr. Strange, that's a good one. So, Ditko characters. That's what you got. All right, cool. Sorry, I'm back. Well, you're, you wait in line. It's all good. It is, yeah. It's all good. Well, so, what you got now? I've got the ask your age, uh, your actor, the, oh my gosh, the actor age question. Yeah. Okay? okay. The actor age question. What was, what was that like? That was a very cathartic episode for yeah. me. And it got me back into the show when I was like, I mean, I started when I was first grade. I'm now 20. Do, but I was 14 when that came out. It changed my life. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, uh, that episode was really cool because also they used um, an artist who they found who did amazing fan art of the, the characters when they were older. So she came in and helped them with it. And that was just, a, once again, like a fun thing actor-wise to get to play the characters, try to have similarities of how the people know the characters, but also have them age, not just vocally, but, you know, personality-wise, they need to have been older and, you know, have more experience behind them, and then also get some um, kind of closure to some of the long 
the like overarching storylines of the show. And so I think that was really, really cool. And I know that a lot of people really love that episode. And, oh, and I agree. The, As a fan, I loved it. <clears throat> yeah. Like, it, it, it. I know. That's a very good, like, actually very sad song. Yeah. Those designs were the wallpaper on my computer for a little while. Okay. Yeah. You're the wallpaper on mine. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> All right, right on. Okay, we got three more left. Let's go. To, let's go ahead and second gear. So, what's your name? Uh, my name is Vladimir. Uh-huh. And what do you want now, Vladimir? Okay, so. They're bring. They're. They're. They're bring new. Go ahead. There, there have been news stories that came out about artificial intelligence that they hit, they released tools that then allow for voices to be synthesized. Mm-hmm. Synth- synthesized where you can type in anything you want this voice to say and then that audio will come out saying those lines. My question now is, from your perspective as voice actors, what do you think this technology <laughs> will do as it evolves what do you see the future of the voice acting industry as far as how this AI tools will influence it? Do you, would you view it as like a possible tool, helpful tool or a threat, maybe to take away jobs? What do you think about that? That is a very, very good question. Um, I will speak from, from just my, my personal opinion, okay? Um, I hate it. I, I really hate it, um, and I would I would love to see it disappear um, because I don't think that it should be taking jobs from people. Um, now there are there will be tools that allow for people to like oh they they can't make it in for an ADR session right. Um, the, the thing that I don't like about it is what they used to do is they would bring in an actor. You know what I wouldn't have as an open door to me? This. Because I would have never been firm. Because they would have never needed a voice match. Um, and I, I love my job. I love getting to meet all of you guys. And I love the opportunities that it's gotten for me. I'm not a fan. Yeah, I mean, I agree with them. It's it's something that obviously um, the entertainment industry as a whole is like facing down like a huge existential crisis about the future of the industry, and that's one of the reasons why um, our different unions are all striking right now and um, voting on striking. Uh, and it's really important that we're protected because mm-hmm. yeah, it's it's the type of thing that. Um, you know, we could not just lose our jobs, but so many countless people in the industry will lose theirs. Mm-hmm. And yeah, there's a lot of really talented people who love what they do and can create something that, you know, AI couldn't create. And I don't think anybody wants to only be exposed to art that's, you know, made by a computer. Yeah. Yeah. The potential for misuse is terrible, too. Yeah. What's your name? Jason. What do you got, Jason? Do you guys always get to record together for every episode? Never. No. No. On our show, we, we've always recorded individually. And it's a bummer, but also so many of us, especially during the first run of the show, lived all over the world. Mm. You know, I was in Florida. Caroline Ray, who plays my mother, was in New York, along with Malik, who plays Baljeet. Mm-hmm. And then we had Ashley Tisdale, who was in Utah for a long time, doing all the high school musical movies. Mm. Um you were in New York and in Phoenix, not doing the job, but you were there. <laughs> and my father was in New Zealand, Richard O'Brien, uh, you know, so everyone was everywhere. And it was really, really difficult to ever get us together, but I really wish we could. It would be yeah. so much fun. I have crossed paths with a lot of people um, in LA studios. Like, yeah, I would meet the person coming That's out. That's where we record the show. That's the studio the we record. I was coming out. Um, and for Ridley Jones, I got to do some ensemble recording, which was great. And then some Something happened in 2020 that changed that? I don't know. But it was cool because I was there with my buddy Tyler, my friend Ashlyn, and then to their left was Lorraine Newman, an original Saturday Night Live cast member. And to Lorraine's left was Bob Bergen, the voice of Porky Pig for 30 years. Yeah. Like, I would do my line and then immediately go... And just watch them. Just to study. And it, it's this funny thing because, like, I think education in our space is suffering a little bit because we, we don't get the opportunity to learn from these industry vets who are godlike, right? I, if, I, if I could be doing sessions alongside D. Bradley Baker every week, yeah. I would be so much better because I'd be studying him every day. 
Yeah, I, w I wish we could, but yeah, we don't for this show. Question. All right, Raven, bring us home. Yeah. Final Raven question. Uh, Clara. Um, so is Doofenshmirtz, is he Phineas's father at all? No. Nope. No? Okay. No, that has not. been disproven yeah. by okay. the creators. No, they not. have patently. No. Yeah. No, it's it's just a, a internet fan theory. There's a couple of them that are all wrong. Um, yeah. Yeah, I get why you asked, but no, he's not. I, have you guys seen this like Cubone Charmander theory that's going around? I thought that one was pretty compelling. But whether it's real or not, I think it's fun to engage in that kind of stuff. Yeah. So before we go, guys, um, anything uh, upcoming on the docket that you're allowed to share with us? He's not. Uh, <laughs> I know he's got something. He's got some we'll very, very cool tuned. stuff. And yeah, later this summer, you guys will probably see his name involved with some other great cartoons. But um, you know, we're just excited to be doing two more seasons of the show. You. Yeah. Maybe more if you guys like it. Yeah, tell everyone to watch it so yeah. that we can do it until we're 80. We want to do it forever, so spam Disney's social media and tell them to let us do it forever. Um, yeah, and then I'm 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 doing one other cartoon on Paramount Plus that I can't talk about yet. Either, yeah. So. Yeah, but. We're excited to be bringing more Phineas and Ferb to all you guys. We really, really are. Yeah. Anime 2023. Like show, right? This was the cast of Phineas and Ferb, and hey. that was our time. Thanks, everybody. Bye.